It's the tail end of 2023. The word corona means beer again. The world is a geopolitical pressure cooker, one military mishap away from plunging us all into World War III, and Creality just released their Ender 3 V3 line, which, holy $200. But that means that's left you with some options in terms of last year's model availability. And last year's model, and the year before. And before that, and before that, and before, and before that. that. The Ender 3 V2 and the Ender 3 V2 Neo are both available at pretty steep discounts, roughly $100 off their original retail price, which makes it a pretty tempting offer. So with that all being said, if you were to buy an Ender 3 V2 and go the upgrade route, what would be the greatest value, bang for your buck as it were, in terms of upgrades? We've had some fun so far upgrading Summer Intern, my Ender 3 V2, Check out those videos if you haven't seen them, but I've kept a spreadsheet of all the money I've spent on this printer so far. So let's take a look at my expense list and see how far we've come with this Ender 3 V2. Oh! Uh, actually, let's not look at that. To someone else, the value in an upgrade might be different, but to me, the actual improvement of this printer is in the reliability. Can I leave this printer set up and print to it from my computer to the Octoprint with the expectation that it will print successfully. And that's what I'm gonna focus on with this list. So here's my top upgrades for the Ender 3 V2 to get the best return on your investment and improve overall reliability. Number five, professional firmware. By professional firmware, I mean specifically Miguel Risco Castillo's professional firmware. This is a Marlin-based firmware that provides an absolutely extensive list of additional features that are simply absent in the stock firmware that comes out of the box with your Ender 3 V2. These features include, but are not limited to, improved support for manual mesh seat, run out icon indicator over the extruder flow, dashboard speed, ABC stepping access value, firmware retracks. And so many more. Now I didn't make this known in my original build video, but I was running a modified version of the professional firmware the whole time. It's sneaky, I know. I didn't cover it in depth in that video because it can get technically daunting. There's a lot of ins and outs that I didn't really want to have to go into. By far, this is the best upgrade for your Ender 3 V2 across the board, no matter what your goals are. Some of my most used features are the Z Probe Wizard, auto bed tramming, filament change functions, custom preheat, and mesh viewer inside of Octoprint. If the default Creality firmware is wearing floaties in the kiddie pool, this upgrade is riding straight over Niagara Falls on a surfboard. And here's the kicker, it's free. Talk about ROI. But if you use it, do consider supporting them. It's basically developed entirely by two guys. While this is bar none the best upgrade that I would recommend for your printer, as with most things in life, nothing worth having comes easy. For a newbie printer owner, flashing and compiling custom firmware is likely the most technically daunting task you will face. It's simple enough to throw a bin file on an SD card and plug it into your printer, but making customizations to your firmware can get messy real quick. Luckily, there's tons of great resources out there to hold your hand through this process, and once you know what you're looking at, it becomes more straightforward. Number four, stiffer springs or silicone pegs and rigid mount. In a previous video, I installed stiffer bed springs. While these are a great upgrade over the stock springs, and I still stand by what I said, I began to wonder, do I even need these springs? Can I just mount the bed directly to the base with some spacers or something? Turns out, not only yes, but this might actually be the preferred upgrade path for those looking for less tinkering and more consistency. If I can remove one variable from the system, I'm all game. Like who wants to tram the bed anyway? Now, rigidly mounting the bed requires you have a manually generated mesh or auto meshing created by a touch sensor. Because you can't trim the bed, then you need some way to account for the inconsistencies across the bed. For simplicity's sake, you can just stick with the springs, but the rigid mount plus a mesh is the route that I will be taking in the long term, which is actually what Summer Intern has right now, and to be honest, I have nothing but good things to say about this. Number three, PEI sheets. Now, these we covered in the previous video. PEI sheets are one of the best bang for your buck upgrades. All my printers run PEI sheets, and I would strongly recommend this upgrade. If you don't have PEI sheets, it's probably one of the first upgrades you should do because it's a simple upgrade that can make a world of difference. This is one of the easiest ways to increase first layer adhesion, aid in part removal, and give you a variety of options for your bed surface. Number two, dual Z axis plus anti-backlash screws. Wee -woo, wee -woo. Spicy topic alert. This topic is something that people like to debate over the necessity of, but the original stock Ender 3 V2 only has a single lead axis screw 
and a cantilever on the other side. And while this technically works, it doesn't mean that it's optimal. Don't be confused. The single Z motor and lead screw is a cost-saving measure to bring the overall price of the printer down, not a performance enhancer. The cantilever requires adjustment to dial it in, which is just another point of failure. The cantilever can sag, causing unlevel prints, which is no good, no bueno for our overall goal of increasing consistency. The additional Z-axis comes in as a $30 kit from Creality and is super simple to install. No additional hardware or modifications are necessary. Basically just plug and play. All you have to do is access your motherboard, plug in the motor cable splitter, and install the new motor to the frame. This kit coupled with the anti-backlash screws I showed in the last video, stopped the gantry from lowering automatically under its own weight and accidentally pushing one side down when changing filament. So in my opinion, the Z-axis upgrade is worth it for improving overall consistency. And number one, the BLCR Touch. Finally, the BLCR Touch. This should be no surprise to anyone that's remotely familiar with 3D printing. Auto bed leveling is simply the best value for money investment you can make into your printer for improving reliability. While this is the most expensive upgrade on this list, that cost is offset by simply the amount of time you would save dealing with trying to dial in first layer adhesion and bed surface inconsistencies. Unless you don't value your time. It's also worth noting that in order to activate the BL Touch, at a minimum, you're gonna have to reflash the appropriate firmware from Creality's website. But the BL Touch coupled with this aforementioned professional firmware is a downright beautiful combo. These two things belong together, like Chick-fil-A and Sundays. So those are my top five. Let's take a look at our list. If you were to buy this printer right now off Creality's website, $179 for the printer. We're also running a $50 Black Friday sale. It's even cheaper. $37.99 for the BL Touch. $30 for the Z-Axis. Somewhere between $18 to $25 for your PEI sheets. And $10 for the backlash screw. In total, you're looking at something like $300 all in. And you've got a solid setup for printing reliably. And then I have a sneaking suspicion that printer price will be knocked down even further with the most recent holiday and with Christmas coming up. So, with that all being said, I hope you learned something. And thanks for watching.